dogs. They ain't the prettiest thing you can let. Matter of fact, I think it's a critter that only the mother can love. They're built low to the ground. They're tougher than nails, and they can move pretty darn fast when they want to. Hey, Ralph, it kind of sounds like you. Yeah. But don't ever underestimate these critters. Their eyesight may not be the best, but they can hear and smell like any other big game species. Believe me, they're very agile and can be gone as fast as they came in. But hog hunting can test all your skills, from stalking to shooting and everything in between. These animals were made for bow hunters, and you'd be amazed on how many hogs are running through the woods and swamps in many states. They can fill your freezer with some great table fare and put the best equipment to the test, but don't be afraid. They ain't gonna eat you. But they will eat anything, and this can be the way to be very successful on hunting these hogs. Find the food sources or create one, and get ready for some wild action. Is that a bear or what? Look at the size of this bear! He's a bruiser. Hi, welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. And this week, we're going to go hog hunting. Hog. Hogs and javelinas, that is. Hogs and javelinas. And first, Ralph and I, we went down to Florida and we hunted at the Osceola Outfitters with Hoppy Kempfer. Oh, uh, and Mario and Robert, where they took us out and we had some unbelievable action stalking these wild, wild hogs down in Florida. Then team bow hunters head back to Texas and they have some incredible action on javelinas. You don't want to miss this week's show. hunting here in uh, Central Florida to uh, take care of some nuisance hogs. They tear up the pastures, um, the grazing uh, pastures that are for the cattle that the uh, farmers put a lot of time, money, and effort into. Um, they really do a number on them. You'd be surprised where, you know, two or three hogs could really uh, destroy uh, an acre of land very quickly. And, you know, multiply that by 20, 30, 40 hogs, they do some major damage. Well, you could come to Florida and be under drought conditions and be very dry, dusty, and sandy. You'd still have the uh, cypress heads, um, which are located around us. We have pine and oak hammocks. Uh, then you could travel to Florida, have the same cypress heads, pine and oak hammocks, but with just about three feet of water. And um, that's why we use vehicles that are very equipped for the mud and they have to be four-wheel drive. We have agriculture tires on them because it could be a very nasty situation. And uh, then you throw the snakes and all that into it. It makes it that much more fun. Because of their poor eyesight, this makes for a true bow hunting big game species. Because you can get up on them as long as you watch the wind. But don't be fooled. Their sense of smell and hearing are second to none and tough. You better put a good shot on these little tanks, for if not, they're gone, and you may see them a few days later eating up your food plots or rooting up your land. Their hides are tough, and they have all with somewhat a protective shield along their sides. So don't underestimate these little guys. It takes great shooting, good equipment, and hunting skills to successfully stalk and take these critters on a regular basis. You need to get close, put a good shot on them, and plan on having a hunt of a lifetime for it is truly a wild and fun experience and one for the whole family to join in on. Now let's check out the Vixter as she goes for one of these most attractive looking animals. I had a little hard time trying to get into these, some of these hogs and then all of a sudden we did a stalk close to a feeder. Yep. But we were doing, you know, right on a trail there and wouldn't you know it, I had a hen turkey come in too. And she, and, I mean, to have us filming, not in our double bull blinds, and she was right there. That was, that was pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. Check this out. In today's society, you know, it's getting a little bit tougher to get a lot more 
of the newcomers in our sport, especially our wives, our girlfriends, whatever, and you know, the kids. Hog hunting is a blast. They don't have to, a lot of times you don't have to sit up in a tree stand and wait for days, you know, for that one opportunity. You can go out and make it happen, and making it happen, you know, you it's, it's more of a, an instantaneous type of hunt. You're into action most of the time. So this type of hunting, this hog hunting, is a great avenue for the newcomers to get those families into it. And the other thing is, let's face it, hogs, they ain't the prettiest thing out there. I was going to give you one tip on being more successful on your next hog hunt. Locate the food source. These babies love to eat. So whether it's going to be a fresh rooting area, we're out in, a, out in an agricultural field, or maybe even where the farmer's feeding the cattle, or even a feeder, you locate these food sources, those pigs will be there. down in Florida, hunting the wild hogs. This is my first Florida wild hog, and he's a beauty. Stay tuned for more of the Archer's Choice. This week, you know, don't kid yourself, even though you've heard a lot of, you know, rumors going on how pigs are so tough, your basic white-tailed deer setup's gonna do it. I mean, the bottom line here is, yes, they have a shield. They absolutely have some type of armor around them, you know, right near the vitals, but, an average white-tailed deer setup is going to punch right through that, as long as you're shooting a sharp, good quality broadhead. Well, now it's Ralph's turn, and he takes a hog. How many? Two. Come on, you have to admit, that was awesome. You know, all I have to say is you have a horseshoe, and we Be won't nice. go there. Check this out. <laughs>
There's another one. spot <sighs> folks it don't look it but we are dressed here it's mid-february we're down here in florida i think the northern weather followed us down here because we're freezing but i just had a double header on Florida hogs. I, had, I shot one. That one started screaming a little bit. Another one, another boar come in. Boom. I took him at 30 yards. And we just filled the freezer. What an incredible hunt. Let's go get my hogs. Hey, guys, come here. See, when my bow's on... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, <laughs> that <a> big <laughs> brown, baby. <laughs> yes. Oh. He redeemed himself? Yes, he has redeemed himself. <laughs> <laughs> the other one has that. Yeah, he's okay. <clears throat> okay. I thought you played right there. Look at it. Look at this. Look at this spray. Here he is. <laughs> Ooh, he ran into the tree. Yeah. Huh? Man, is that a good eating here? Oh, oh yeah, yeah buddy. <laughs> Thanks, right. guys. Wow. Folks, we're down here. It's middle February. Deer season's over almost everywhere. And what? Is this awesome? We, these are, this is in the wild. There's no fences. And I mean, these, these are feral hogs. Yes. And I mean, they're roaming all over. How much? All over the place. In fact, they're a major nuisance here for the for the farmers because they tear up the pastures. They root up the pastures, tear them up. Major, major nuisance. On private land, you can hunt them year-round. You can hunt them year-round? Yes, you can. I mean, and there's a lot of public land that these things are there. Oh, doing. they're just... It's, they're everywhere. There's a lot of there's a lot of farmers that if you contact them down here in Florida, you can they want you to take yes. these hogs. I've I've even heard of farmers um, doing uh, annual hog hunts when the hunting season you know starts up. And what they do it's a minor trespass fee, twenty five thirty dollars. They have an area cordoned off for you for you to go in there and uh, and, uh, and and run their property. They'll have you know. People who work the property to show you where to go, and and you go in and you hog hunt, and it's to help them control the number of hogs because they they really these they, things propagate like oh, like it is, rabbits. I mean, yes, R real bad. And you're talking practically all year long. I yeah. mean, you want to sharpen up your your skills, skills, your with, that, skills? with that bow. I mean, the way to hunt these, by far, my choice is with a bow. Yeah. You know, stop. You know, spot and stalk with the bow is the way to go. This next hunt, we head down with team bow owner Bubba Cross again, down on the Kachina Ranch for Javelina, or Collared Peccary. Some of you maybe never heard of them, but they're a pretty cool critter. They really are cool. And just so you know, they're not even in the hog family. No. They're in the rodent family, but they still taste okay to eat. Yeah, and I mean, people say, rodent? Nah. But you have to remember, when you see this animal, you're going to call it a pig. A hog, as we say. Hog. Check this hunt out. There he is. 
Look at the choppers on this thing. I tell you what, they've got so many javelinas here. We hope you enjoyed the show this week, and we want to extend an invitation to all you couples out there. Next year, with Osceola Outfitters, Inc. and Hoppy Kempfer, right. you can go to OsceolaOutfittersInc.com and check out all the information. We're going to have a couples-only hog hunt. That's right. We're inviting the couples down there and do some hunting with us. It's only a limited number because he wants to keep the quality of his hog hunting, you know, up right to there. par. Right. But the thing is, is we're inviting you to come on down and see what it's all about, and maybe, just maybe, we might get you on film for one of the Archer's Choice TV shows and videos. So until next week, same time, same station, right here on, on the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.